Big Ten contest between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Ohio State Buckeyes. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. Wayne Larravee with Steve Brody. Iowa is just two and a half games back of Indiana in the Big Ten race for the top. Now, the Hawkeyes will get a shot at Indiana coming up this weekend in Bloomington, but they know they can't look past Ohio State. Well, they proved that the first time out. Of course, uh, Ohio State dealt them their first loss. And in that ball game, they played close to a perfect game. They did all the things you had to do to beat Iowa. First of all, they handled the pressure. Only turned the ball over seven times. More importantly, when they broke the full court pressure, they scored. In the half court offense, they played very disciplined and took high percentage shots. And down the stretch, they made all their free throws. Believe me, nothing short of that type of a performance will be good enough to win again tonight. Well, you take a look at Ohio State. This is a ball club that has won eight of their last ten in conference play, including four in a row. They're led by one of the great players in the nation in Dennis Hobson. Iowa, on the other hand, one of the deepest teams in the country. Steve, what do you look for? You know, it's funny. Both teams come in with relatively the same game plan. Each coaching staff is concerned about the other's team ability to score in transition. As a result, this is what you're going to see. Offensively, both teams will try to get the ball down the floor and score. If they don't have the fast break, they're going to be very patient in the half-court offense, shoot the high percentage shot. Defensively, both teams will use full court pressure, but it won't be the gambling type defense. They're going to look for containment, and Iowa, ironically, feels that they want the game to be decided by half court offense. They think their ability to execute the half court offense will be the telling factor. All right, we've got a great one. Iowa and Ohio State will be back with the starting lineups after these messages. That's where we are, St. John Arena. And it's going to be a great night for college basketball as the Iowa Hawkeyes get set to take on Ohio State. And this is a crucial two-game road trip for Iowa as far as their hopes for the Big Ten Championship are concerned. And let's go to the public address announcer at St. John Arena, Ron Altoff. is a must for every Big Ten fan, especially watching the exciting action here on the Big Ten TV network. To get your book, just send $6 to Big Ten Yearbook, Fisher, Illinois, 61843-0010. Of course, Gary Williams served under Tom Davis as an assistant of both Lafayette College and Boston College. Like Davis, she believes in a relentless, suppressing uh, attack style of play, Steve Brody. And we should see up-tempo to its highest form, I would imagine, here tonight. Although, as you mentioned in the pregame show, they want to execute half-court offense and force half-court offense to the Hawkeyes. We look at the stats here, season comparison. Both teams, same type of style. 
Wayne, one of the real key factor in that earlier ball game was that down the stretch, there were a lot of fouls in that ball game. In fact, Ohio State shot 27 free throws to 14 for Iowa. With all the stoppage in play in the second half, down the stretch the last five minutes, Ohio State was tremendously refreshed. They were probably as fresh as Iowa, and as everybody knows, that's one of the key ingredients to Iowa wins. They tend to wear teams down in the second half. Gary Wright in the dark uniform for the Hawkeyes. Dennis Hobson in the white uniform for the Buckeyes. We're about set to go. Big Ten basketball underway. And the Buckeyes control the opening tip. This is Curtis Wilson. Iowa, Iowa will start man-to-man -man defense, but I think you can expect to see them play more zone than man throughout the ballgame. Tom Davis mentioned this week he was most impressed with Ohio State's quickness. People don't think they have the kind of quickness that Iowa does. He felt they were quicker across the board than the Hawkeyes were in that first game. This is Francis, swatted away <laughs> by Wright. And we get our first defensive explosion of the game from Sir Jamalock, Gary Wright. Well, I think you bring up a very, very important point. In fact, Tom Davis and his staff will tell you that in many ball games, their opponents are quicker at almost every position. But, you know, they use that relentless style and that tough defense, and they come out on top more often than not. Marble and Armstrong working to perfection, and Armstrong finishes it off after Marble triggered the steal. Iowa, the early lead. Just underway from St. John Arena. Again, you see the full court zone pressure, but they fall back and pick up man to man. Jay Person's been a good shooter this season for Ohio State. He can hurt you if you're in a zone. Low house with the feed, Gary Wright. Low house gets it back, trying to oh, shovel it over to plan. Wright. Right through his hands. He wasn't expecting it. Here comes Burson. Anderson up high, battling his own teammate for the rebound, and Gary Wright is called for a foul. First foul of the ball came on Wright. Again, Lojas, I thought that time it was a great, great pass, but I thought he was in great position at seven feet tall just to put that up on the board and get the basket. Gary Wright obviously wasn't prepared for the pass. Didn't well, expect it. And you can see anytime there's a turnover, uh, the speed and quickness on Ohio State will give them that transition opportunity. Miss the shot, and it, mo most importantly, the big men must fill the lanes and they get the offensive rebound. Curtis Wilson, a key in the transition game for Ohio State. Here he is on the drive. Curtis had just two turnovers against the Iowa Press in Iowa City back in January. This is Gamble, and he'll be called for traveling. Well, I'd have to see that one again. Players, it seems more and more, are using the jump stop offensively. They'll dribble past the, the defender, come to a jump stop, and you know, I thought, at least from this angle, that maybe that, that's what happened and that there was no uh, traveling violation. Full court pressure by Iowa. Anderson receives the inbounds, and here's Curtis Wilson. Now they'll just fall back and pick up man. There comes Armstrong. Uh-oh. Hobson in the corner with a good fake from three-point territory. Lowhouse clears the board of authority. Hawkeyes in transition. The pass down low off the mark, but Marble cleans up on the garbage. Great hustle that time by Anderson. Just the luck of the bounce. Old court pressure relentless by both teams, and we've got a foul on Kevin Gamble. Reaching in, Gamble picks up his first, second on the team. Wayne, with Iowa playing man-to-man, -man, a lot of people thought we'd see a great matchup with Marble guarding Hobson. They're going to start Gamble on Hobson and have all the other four defenders, you know, give some help. They want Marble to be fresh offensively. They don't want to wear him out chasing Hobson the, the entire ball game. Lowhouse defending on the inbounds. Here's the over-the-shoulder catch by Wilson on the feed. Hobson! Ohio State by two. Lowhouse for three. Marble battling for the rebound. Gamble baseline feeding Lowhouse. Hobson comes up with it in a crowd down low. This is Curtis Wilson. Francis is there. Four unanswered points by the Buckeyes, and they have a four-point lead. Burson on the steal. Curtis Wilson pulls it up. Great decision right there. Those are the key decisions you've got to make the entire ball game. Now, I disagree with that shot attempt. I thought that's too quick. 
bring it out and set it up. See, he would Gary Williams would rather have them bring that ball out and set it back up and run 40 seconds before they shoot it. B.J. Armstrong with a nifty move, and he's fouled on the play. Looked like Francis may have been Williams clipping him on the way by. But it appeared to be Francis on the shot, and that's who they're calling the foul on. Jerry Francis. No, they're not. They're going with Curtis Wilson on the foul. His first, that's the first on the team. Non-shooting affair as a result. If they don't get out on low right here, he'll shoot that three-pointer right off the inbounds. Lowhouse looking inside, yeah. gets it to the corner, though, the opposite side. Armstrong off the mark. Lowhouse leaned in for the offensive foul. Now, Lowhouse put his shoulder down. Very difficult from our angle to tell how much real uh, contact there was, but great job by Francis. He was in position, did what he was supposed to do. It all down. It looks to me like they're going to be real tight in this game tonight. They're going to call it real close. I don't know how you do that in the Big Ten, but I've not seen it happen often, and we've got a five-second violation against Ohio State of the inbounds. Iowa gets it back. One of the things you have to realize is it's so difficult to officiate in this league, particularly this year. I think the... Uh, the defensive contact is picked up. The physical play is picked up. If you're an official, you don't want to shoot free throws the whole ball game. So you have to be very judicious and only call the foul that really affects play. There have been a couple of calls tonight, though, that I've seen let go on other nights in the Big Ten. Here's Armstrong. Good move as he like gets that by right Francis. B.J. <laughs> <laughs> has two from the field and four points. Iowa trails by two, and on the inbound, Lowhouse leaning over. Curtis Wilson is guilty of the foul. Lawhouse picks up his second. Now that is four team fouls in Iowa. Well, certainly this is one of those fouls that many times you mentioned we see let go. And that's a big one because that gives Lawhouse two fouls already. Uh, just two minutes and 14 seconds, 314 into the ball game. Lawhouse has a seat on the bench. Now what the players have to do, Wayne, is adjust to the type of whistle that's going to be blown. Anderson right through his hands. Armstrong picks up. That's Jeff Moe in the corner, and Iowa will set it up. Alorenzen has come on for Lohaus. Here's Jeff Moe. Hobson on the rebound. Buckeyes on the break, and Hobson's pass a little too wide for Wilson. Well, Hobson that time tried to get just a little too fancy. Had a man wide open on the right. The difficult pass was the one to the left. Big to the right, went to the left with it, right? <laughs> Should have just given it right up, right up to the guy on the right. Turnover's now even, and scores within two points of being even. Hawks can tie with a field goal here. This is Armstrong, yes. B.J. has three from the field and six of the eight Iowa points. Well, Armstrong, I think, is really a pleasant and outstanding surprise this year. Really improving offensively. Wilson had it knocked out of bounds, believe by Armstrong, and it'll belong to Ohio State. Not a bad shot blocker either. He's, not, he? he's a great <laughs> athlete. There's Gary Williams and a marvelous job he's done here at Ohio State. They're just delighted to be in the fray for first division finish in the Big Ten and an NCAA berth. Francis rolling hook shot. Of hand. His second for the field. He's got four. Well, Francis isn't always pretty with what he does, but he gets the job done. He bangs around inside, takes up room, and when he's in close to the basket, he can score. Jeff Moe from three-point territory. Iowa. Back to within one. And that's what that's how Iowa can break your back because you, you get down inside, you score a good basket, run a good offensive play. Before you have time to sit up on defense, they're knocking one down on you. From three-point territory, no doubt. 15-33 left to go, first half of play. Francis inside, overplayed by Horton, who picks up his first foul of the game. That is number five on the Hawkeyes, and right away Tom Davis Club is in foul difficulty as far as team fouls are concerned. 15-30 left to be played. We've got a break of the action. Iowa on top of Ohio State by one. We'll be back after these local messages. Back in Columbus, Ohio, and former Ohio State basketball coach Fred Taylor was recognized prior to the tip-off of this evening's action for his induction into the National Basketball Hall of Fame. The black gift was presented by Director of Athletics Rick Bay. Taylor coached Ohio State 59 through 76, and I'll tell you something, he had some great players here. Havlicek, Lucas Era, 
Well, I tell you, they went a lot of years where they didn't change the head football coach or basketball coach. They really did. By Talk the way, Rick, Rick Bay, uh, believe it or not, was the head wrestling coach at Michigan when I played. Now the no athletic kid. director here at Ohio State. <laughs> Boy, he's moved up, huh? Ohio State shooting 45.5%. Iowa 55.6 in the early going. Ohio State basketball. Curtis Wilson triggering on the inbounds. Hobson takes it out front. This is Burson. Buckeyes trailing by a point. And Iowa now into their 1-2-2 uh, two, two or 3-2 two zone. Looks like they're matching up a little bit more than usual. Ohio State played a little more zone than usual in the second half against Northwestern, and Wilson over the zone for three. Ohio State on top by two, and here comes Billy Jones right back for Iowa. In the zone defense, Iowa's biggest concern was being able to locate Hobson and Wilson for three-point field goals. They did not do the job there. Roy Marble inside connects for Iowa. Hawkeyes have knotted it up at 13 with 14.45 to go. Wilson on the penetration. Good feed. Anderson blocked away by Jones in the foul call. Bill Jones, his first six team fouls on the Hawkeyes. As you get a look at Gary Williams, Ohio State head coach. I would say right now Lee, that both offenses are having their way. Here you see the dribble penetration. When Ohio State plays well offensively, they get both dribble penetration and pass penetration in their half-court offense. We've seen Wilson go in for two baskets. We've seen a couple situations where they've penetrated and, and thrown the pass for the easy basket. On the other end, I don't think Ohio State is, is getting back and uh, reacting quick enough defensively yet. For the most part, Iowa has gotten the ball inside. When they're taking the perimeter shot, it's been relatively easy to get and been in the 12, 15-foot range. John Anderson, a 73% free throw shooter, good on one out of two, but the Buckeyes rebound thanks to Jerry Francis. In the corner, Person not afraid from there, gets a better shot. <laughs> You have to love watching this guy play. You have to remember, he is the all-time leading scorer in Ohio high school, high school basketball, basketball history. Yeah. <laughs> at 5'11", 145 pounds. Horton with some heavy work down low. Oh, he get away with a bump there. His first from the field, he's got two. And Iowa trails by one. Old court pressure again. Wilson breaks it across. Wilson trying to feed Hopkins. Oh, oh. <laughs> Jones breaks it across for Iowa and cans it. But see, that's <laughs> both teams at their best offensively. And there goes your momentum now. Mo gets it back for Iowa and he's fouled on the play. Only the second foul on Ohio State. Looked like Jerry Francis on a hack across the wrist. Well, I tell you, Iowa gives you absolutely no time to enjoy success. That's right. You know, Hobson, just, Hobson could make anybody an assist leader in the Big Ten, I think, with the great catch and basket there. But before you know it, look, look at this. This well, is just, you got to have great hands. Look at this. Over his head off the mark, and he hung in the air for what seemed like a full second. <laughs> but, but more importantly, from a momentum uh, point of view and uh, you know, who's going to win this game long, long run? Again, Ohio State did not get back. They just ran the ball down the floor and shot a, a, an eight-foot jump shot and then steal the inbounds pass. And Jeff Bow ties the count at 18. Urson breaks it across, has a two-on-one and takes the J. Right up high for the rebound. Here come the Hawks. B.J. Armstrong. Armstrong taking Urson oh. in and right slams it through. Gary Wright with authority on his first from the field. Wilson right back like a pinball machine down there in the lane, and here comes Armstrong. Again, this game's going Iowa's way. Burson guilty in the foul. His first and the third on the team. You know, it's so difficult. Um, I can remember when I was a, a junior, we went into a Indiana one time, played a three-guard offense and said, look, we're going to hold the ball a little bit. That's what Ohio State would like to do tonight. They want to hold the ball a little bit. They want to make Iowa play some defense and, and prevent the transition game. But if you break the press and come down and have a wide-open 12-footer, you know, how do you not take that shot? That's a good shot. No question about it. Gambled out the free-throw strike. Changes being made on both sides. It's very difficult 
to implant in a player's mind that, you know, a wide open 12 footer is not a good shot. 70% free throw shooter is Kevin Gamble overall. Misses on his first, he'll have another, shooting a little bit less than 70% of Big Ten action. Yeah, it looks like that. Gary Wright was shaken up on that last play, and that's why he's out of the game. One out of two at the line for Kevin Gamble. Iowa now leading by three. Kip Lomax just reported on for Ohio State. This is Curtis Wilson out front, and Iowa packing in that zone again, Steve. Well, in that time, they broke the pressure. Certainly, they didn't have much of an advantage. But it looks like during the, uh, the break in action with the free throw that Gary Williams made his point. Hey, you know, this thing's getting a little bit out of hand. Let's take a little bit more control of the tempo. Beautiful throw down the lane by Wilson. That snaps six unanswered points by the Hawkeyes. Now, here's the other important factor that we need to watch throughout the ball game. Jump ball indication is made on the alternating possession that will belong to the Hawkeyes. After made baskets, Ohio State's defensive strategy is they're going to run both of their guards at B.J. Armstrong and try to prevent him from just running the ball down the floor unimpeded. They want to make him stop, change directions, and stop that offensive transition in the other way. Hawkeyes set up offensively, leading by one from the corner. The shot is good by Roy Marble. His third for the field. He's got six. Here comes Lomax. Just blew by him. Blocking foul is called. Score the field goal. And Horton picks up his second. Well, here's what I don't understand. This is uh, two plays in a row now where an Ohio State offensive player has broken the defensive pressure down the left side of the court. Both times, B.J. Armstrong was in a position where he could have cut the offensive player off and stopped him from taking the ball to the basket. In both instances, it looked like he intentionally allowed the player to go to the basket. Now, I don't know if that's the, the strategy, but I, I can't believe it is. Uh, so I'm a little surprised that they've let Ohio State take the ball to the basket so much. Gary Williams working on the Ohio State bench. There's Kip Lomax. Lomax, a starter earlier in his career here at Ohio State, misses on the free throw. Academically ineligible until January of this year. This is Roy Marble. Tell you something, Roy Marble has All-America written on him for next year. Now this is one on four. Bring it out. There you go. Kip Lomax sets it up with 12 minutes left to go. First half of play, Iowa leading by three. Well, Marble's already a great player. I mean, he's got all the athletic ability in the world. I can't wait to see what kind of player he is when he becomes a little more aggressive offensively. We've seen him go up twice now uh, for the jumper. I'd like to see him you know, look at the, at the basket a little bit. Burson comes up short. Lowhouse clears the rebound with Burson hanging on his arm, literally. Now the Hawkeyes set it up. 11.34 left to go. Marble dealing down low to Lowhouse. Tap by Gary Wright won't go. And Tony White clears the board for Ohio State. Lomax on the run, dishing off. This is Francis, but we've got a blocking foul before the shot attempt by Francis. B.J. Armstrong hit with his first personal. Iowa is over the limit. Again, B.J. Armstrong just not doing a real good job of... of uh, containing that offensive player is coming down leading the fast break. He did the right thing, trying to draw the charge that time. It was a good whistle there. I tell you, you know, these two teams, their style of play, their philosophies mirror one another. As we mentioned, uh, uh, Tom Davis was the mentor for Gary Williams throughout much of Williams' early coaching career, and they believe in the same type of up-tempo, pressure-type defense and explode-to-the-boards type of offense. Well, and obviously Iowa has much better depth. That would be the one big difference. I think also, you know, when you've got a player of Hopkins caliber, I think that within the uh, the continuity offense, you design a few more plays for him specifically, whereas Iowa, for the most part, won't do much of that. Lomax, the junior from Columbus, Mifflin High School. Good outside shooter and demonstrates as much from 15 feet away on the free throw. 11.22 left to go, first half of play. That's the story from Columbus. We'll be back after this on the Big Ten Television Network.
John Arena in Columbus, Ohio. The telecast of tonight's game is authorized by the Big Ten Conference and is intended solely for the private use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten Conference is strictly prohibited. Watch this action, Steve. Now, Wayne, uh, Gary Wright probably is as explosive as a as an explosive offensive talent as, as any player in the country. He's, you know, they've decided to start him now. He's into the starting lineup because the coaching staff feels like they want the, you know, he's a fifth-year senior. This is his last chance. And they want that desire that they think runs on a fifth-year senior uh, down the stretch. They want him on the floor a little bit more often. And that injured uh, hand is coming along much better. Here's Gary Wright. Went with the left hand, that heavily bandaged hand, and drilled it off the glass. Gary Wright has four. Now the steal by Gamble to Marble. Boy, they strike in a hurry, don't they? Well, that ball was tipped on the inbounds play. Ohio State will get it back. The Hawkeyes are swarming, and Gary Williams needs a timeout to realign right now. Momentum with Iowa. The Hawks have built their largest lead of the evening with 11 minutes left to go, and Gary Williams wants some help from the officials. Big Ten basketball continues after these messages from your local stations. 10 scoreboard. We've got 11 minutes left to go. Iowa on top by five, and that swarming full court pressure defense really taking its toll on the Buckeyes. I've never seen a team where just getting the ball in bounds against them was an art form. I mean, you've really got to practice just getting the ball in bounds against Iowa. Part of what Ohio State did so well in Iowa City was take care of the basketball. Can you believe that? Only seven turnovers in that ball game. They've they, probably got eight or nine they've already. They've got at least seven right now. Ohio State has seven turnovers at least. Inside, Hobson on the turn. Rebound, back tap by Gary Wright to B.J. Armstrong. Armstrong in the alley of Bowhouse. Impressively good. Almost a steal again. It's a dangerous pass. Cross court on the inbounds. Hobson make that to Burson pulling up for the jumper. Gamble on the rebound. The lead, Armstrong. Brown wanted an offensive basket interference, but the officials are right on top of it. There was no interference whatsoever. Iowa's on an 8 nothing run. Well, they get him so quickly, too. You know, they just, you know, when you shoot the ball, they're always going to release some people down the court. So you, you have to play somebody back defensively all night long. Hobson's had a tough night from the field. Here comes Armstrong. It's going to be three on two again, four on two. Reds the needle oh. to carry right. Will they allow it? No! Traveling the car. Mike Stockner with the call. And that stuff, watch the stuff here. It almost goes through the basket. Gary Wright hangs onto the rim and knocks it out. That's difficult to tell. Difficult to tell from the camera angle on the traveling. Six turnovers for Iowa now. I think what happened, the pass hit him in between steps. So he ended up taking one step and then came to a jump stop. So three steps would be traveling. Buckeyes playing better on the inbounds. Hobson breaking it across. Hobson looking to deal. Nowhere to go with it. Great defense by Wright that time. Stayed right with him, didn't he? Cut him off at the baseline. Got defensive help and didn't leave his feet when Hobson uh, went with the head fake. That's the big thing. You don't leave your feet down there. Well, you know it's hard to believe. Usually a team that is, has big inside offensive players will work that inside offense and get to the free throw line. Ohio State, you look out there now, you got Hobson at 6'5", Burson 5'11", Wilson 5'11", uh, Francis at 6'5", Anderson at 6'9". They have shot more than 100 free throws than their opponents in the Big Ten alone. That's, that's just unheard of. Tom Davis not at all happy with that call on Jeff Moe, his first personal foul. Pushing foul against Hobson. One and one opportunity, and Dennis Thompson connects on his first. He has five points, but it has not been a glorious first half thus far for Hobson. Two-time Big Ten Player of the Week, second nationally in scoring. He leads the Big Ten. Things good out of there. They've got to get the ball in his hands. We're also going. Would you say, Steve? I, I would think so. I would look for him to be much more aggressive offensively. It's funny, I watched practice yesterday, and they had a pretty lengthy and, and vigorous workout. He shot the ball twice in practice. Mm. That's all, twice. 
They're trying to spread the wealth in that regard. Mo from the outside. Wright is there with the rebound, and he's fouled right away. Well, I've always felt that the best player on a team has a tremendous responsibility because generally the way that player plays will dictate how the team plays. And if that player is selfish, the team's going to be selfish. If that player hustles, the team's going to hustle. And uh, for Hobson, you know, he's chosen the unselfish role. He gets everybody involved. Jerry Francis guilty of his second personal foul. That is the fourth on Ohio State. Tom Davis making some changes in the Iowa lineup. Blowhouse comes out. Lorenzen reports back on for the Hawkeyes. Ohio State goes about three deep, basically, on their bench. Iowa will go as many as four to five at times. Marble is the only Hawkeye without a foul thus far with 8.47 to go. First half of play. Iowa leading by seven. This is unusual for them, Steve. They're usually, they're usually coming from behind in their games. Lorenzen. They are, I'll tell you, they are really executing on their half-court offense. They're getting a good shot at the basket every time. They got a foul on that rebound, Frey, and it's going against Gary uh, Jerry Francis once again. I, I or is it Gary Gary. Wright? Let's Watch it again. Here it is. Gary Wright and Gerry Francis, and it's Gary Wright guilty of the foul. His second the personal team over the limit, obviously, three, as we've been right. mentioning. And I was been over the limit since well before the 10-minute mark of this first half. You know, a player hates to pick up a foul like that because, really, he left the floor first. Okay? Francis made his move yeah, after uh, Wright had left the floor. But, again, Francis got in position, and Wright ended up coming over the back a little bit. Wright came into him. Wright's move, obviously, you're right. He was in the air before he committed the foul, but he was moving into Francis, and that, obviously, the contact uh, precipitates the foul. But as a coach, you can't be upset at a foul like that. It's a good, aggressive uh, play, and that's just a part, of, part of the game. Francis makes a pair. He's made the transition, really, from the outside to inside as far as his game is concerned. He was a pretty good outside player under the previous regime here at Ohio State. Well, they've asked him to play power forward for this ball club. He's accepted the challenge and really done a fine job for him. Billy Jones in traffic, threads it through. Iowa handling the ball very well against the Ohio State pressure thus far. Well, they're in a man-to-man -man defense right now. Coming up on the eight-minute mark left to be played first half. Iowa leading by five. Gary Williams will tell you that for Ohio State, it's really been the man-to-man -man defense that turned it around for this ball club. They lost, of course, their first three Big Ten games, went to a little bit more aggressive man-to-man -man defense, and they're eight and two in their last ten. Gary Wright had it knocked out of bounds. The ball stripped away down low. Iowa will retain possession. Well, when you look at Ohio State on paper, and you were mentioning this early, Steve, they are not the most physically gifted team you're going to see. You know, I really believe, you know, Tom Davis, first year in the league, the type of team that Gary Williams had. One of these two guys, or Gene Cady from Purdue, will be coach of the year in the Big Ten. Curtis Wilson will get credit in the box score for the jumper. But it was Tony White who triggered it loose on the steal. Well, they finally got the crowd back in the ball game. You know, a crowd doesn't usually affect the road team that much. Teams will come in. They're accustomed to playing before big hostile crowds. But the home court advantage just makes the home team play that much better. Ohio State needs the crowd in this ball game. Ohio State has scored six in a row, and Jeff Moe gets it to drop off the front of the rim. Moe now with... Seven points in the contest. Old court pressure once again. Iowa tonight has had an answer every time the crowd gets into the game. Here is Hobson on Gary Wright. Wright made him adjust his shot. Anderson on the fall away, and he gets the shooter's touch. This is Jeff Moe. Hobson up high for the rebound. Lost it behind the back. It's up for grabs on the floor. Lorenzen clears to right. Sir Jamalot missed it on the slam and gets called for the offensive foul. That, as much as any offensive field goal by Ohio State, gets this crowd back into the game. <laughs> There will never be lack of action in this ball game oh, tonight. Oh, man. Not when you've got a Hobson and a Gary Wright around. Well, Gary went for the spectacular play. You have to like his confidence. He could have made a much smarter play. Had really a two-on-one situation and probably could have went in on the right side of the basket, drawn some contact, and, and got an easier shot. 
He'll get a look at John Anderson, 6'9", junior. Nine points, eight rebounds at Wisconsin, 15 points at Northwestern on Saturday. He's a guy who has been employed more as a neutralizer in the pivot position. Steve, he's a guy who plays that top defense, neutralizes the opposing center off the board. He's done a good job in that regard. One of the most improved players in the program. Hey, Gary Williams will tell you he's one of the big reasons for their success this year. Uh, you know, he only played 60 total minutes last year. And he might not look it, but he's a solid 235, 240, uh, big and strong. And, now, and against Northwestern, when Northwestern really shaded Hobson all night long, he came up with 16 points. So he's proven that, given the opportunity, he can find the basket. Gamble gets it back. The tap is there by Horton and the Ohio State fans oh, with offensive Horton. interference. Here comes Burson to get it back on the drive. This is the kind of game we expected now. One point lead for Iowa. The intercept by Anderson. Burson for the lead to Wilson. Ohio State has outscored Iowa 14 to 4. And I tell you, it's refreshing to see because I got I want to tell you, it's been a long time since basketball crowds have been this excited in St. John Arena. Gary Williams has given a large amount of the credit for reinstalling that excitement here. But of course, Dennis Hobson's a big reason also. There's the zone on the, on the inbounds. 38-37. Five, just about five and a half to play. Who'd have thought Ohio State would be up one at this time of the ball game and Hobson only have what, six points? Dennis Hobson so far has six points, only two field goals. Hobson picks up a foul right there. That is his first personal. It's only the fifth team foul. And as we mentioned, I was been over the foul limit for a considerable amount of time here in this first half. Since well before the break even point of the half. I look for Iowa to be very, very patient here. Try to get the ball inside. If not, they've shown the ability to, to be able to come up with that real good 12-foot jump shot against his own defense. Marble inside. Horton had it stripped away. Here comes Lomax. Buckeyes on the run. Lomax. Hobson can't get it to fall on the tackle. We've got a foul coming up on Hobson. Dennis picks up his second personal. That is six on the team. He had a good aggressive play by Hobson, but certainly you can't afford to have him in foul trouble. He's got two now. We're going to leave him on the floor. Just depend on his intelligence not to pick up that third. Iowa Hawkeyes take over, trailing by one. He's guarding Marvel now. I wouldn't be surprised to see them isolate, give it to Marble, see if he can make a move inside. Gary Williams can't believe it, but the officials say last touch by Curtis Wilson. Iowa gets it back underneath their own basket. Horton inside handles the pass from Lowhouse. That was Marble with the tip in. Marble on the tip down low. Wilson coming right back, beating Lomax. Right We're seesawing now with 440 to go first half Ohio State by one. You can see, look at all the defensive pre pressure Lomax is putting on Armstrong. Marble in the corner. Marble has 12 points on six field goals. High point man of the game by far. You've got to try to yeah, he walked. Yep. But you've got to try and take Hopson now. You want to get that third foul on him. 11 turnovers now for the Hawkeyes. Certainly you don't want to get into a situation where you look for Marble only and get out of your offensive rhythm. But, you know, you, I, I think at this point you have to try and get that third. There's the uh, turnover situation as you get a look at Gary Williams talking it over with Ted Valentine, the Big Ten re referee or official. I say referee, I keep thinking of wrestling. <laughs> These are officials in basketball, right? Wilson sets it up. Ohio State by one. 
This is Wilson. Three pointer. His second three point shot of the game. Lomax triggers it loose, and Francis picks up. Buckeyes leading by four. They had trailed not long ago by seven. And here's the situation now that Gary Williams wants them to run off 45 seconds. Get a good shot, run some time, they're in control of the tempo. Hobson with the feet inside, and the ball stripped away. Horton guilty of a foul. Hacking foul on Ed Horton. That is three on Horton, so Gary Wright and Ed Horton, the two center, the two pivot men in this Tom Davis, Iowa offense, are in foul trouble here in the first half of play. Well, defense that time was guilty of paying too much ten attention to Dennis Hobson. But that is the type of play I saw him make all day yesterday in practice. Go up for the shot. The defenders around the basket turned their back. He found people for layups all day yesterday uh, during their workout. Keith Wesson of the free throw line, a senior from Niles, Ohio. He started early the season until knee surgery took him out for six games. He won the KU game with a tip in. You look at Ohio State's run this season, and they've got some pretty impressive victories. Uh, you know, if you take a look at Kansas, they've beaten Florida. They've also had some good uh, Big Ten wins here in this conference. They've played well. They deserve an NCAA bid, no question about it. Tom Davis now has some questions for the officials. He's called a timeout. We've got a break to the action with 339 left to be played. I think they're gonna I think Tom Davis says this was a one and one. That's I believe his call. If it's a one and one, if Wesson misses the first free throw, then it should be a rebound on that free throw. We've got a break of the action. We'll return after this on the Big Ten and Television Network. Ohio State, that's the story. 3.39 left to go first half at St. John Arena. And Steve, Dennis Hobson has seven points, or six points, I should say, in this first half thus far. Is there something that Iowa's doing with Dennis Hobson? I mean, he had the big game against the Hawkeyes at 36 points up at Iowa City. Now, I just think that Ohio State has, for the most part, accurately assessed every offensive opportunity. When they've broken the press, they've gotten the ball to the right player at the right time. They've scored against the, you know, the, the, the transition play. They've scored, uh, and I just think I think it's great that they haven't really, you know, overlooked uh, for Hobson. And when Hobson's gotten the ball, he has not uh, he has not forced it. Ohio State, one of the higher scoring teams in the Big Ten Conference. They're shooting 53% for this first half on 16 to 30. Iowa 53% on 18 to 32. The rebounding edge belongs to the Hawkeyes by seven. The turnovers, Iowa has 12. Ohio State has eight free throws. Ohio State's hit nine to 12. Iowa two out of four. Keith Wesson at the line for the second half of his two shot foul. The official state of the two-shot foul after conferring with Dr. Tom Davis. Wesson makes good on the one out of two. It was funny. I think Davis still thought Gary Williams was his assistant. He he caught timeout, wanted to talk to the officials. He said, motion to Gary Williams, come over here. I want to, I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits are hard to break. Ohio State now off the timeout, a little bit more half-court pressure defense, little change up off the timeout. Good ball, Bo, but this is Hill. Kent Hill with his first field goal. Iowa really worked the ball well in the setup offense. I have not seen him play much, but I noticed him yesterday. Boy, he is a quick, explosive offensive player around the basket. He it, played a lot. He looks like a football player. I'm telling you, this guy is built. He is big and strong. Steve, he played a lot in the non-conference campaign, and then when they went into their regular rotations, Gary Wright became healthy, and Kent Hill had to take a back seat to the uh, twin edge in the middle for Iowa. Wesson misses down low. Lowhouse clears the board. Here comes Armstrong. Hawkeyes set up offensively. Lowhouse from three-point range, and air ball. Marble on the rebound. Roy Marble now with 14 points. Marble. 2.25 left to go. First half of play. Iowa trailing by one. Ohio State looking for a three-point lead. Iowa accomplishing on this particular sequence what they want to, and that is to get Iowa, Ohio State to set up offensively. Well, I think they'll be very patient now. They've got Hobson on the bench. They don't want him to pick up his third. They'd be very well advised. Well, they're going to get Hobson back in now. Jerry Francis guilty of shuffling his pivot foot as he took that pass and traveling. Here's the other game going on tonight in the uh, Big Ten. 
Wisconsin trying to hang in against Michigan. What a difficult loss for Wisconsin oh. the other night. You know, Steve, you wonder what the kids have left or what the coaches have left after a game like that. Losing in triple overtime at home to Indiana. Boy, can what you a great game it was, though, for the Big Ten Conference. From the corner. Warmbull again. He's got 16 points now. This is the finest performance I've seen out of Marble all season long. Again, I don't see all the games, but it's as confident as I've seen him look offensively, particularly going up for the short 12-foot uh, jumper. Iowa has a 6-0 run going. Keith Wesson down low, looks to dent it, and he does with a count. No, the foul called on Kent Hill before the shot attempt. Well, that was a nice move by Wesson inside. You mentioned Weston started the first ball game, had a knee problem, got arthroscopic surgery, and really has adjusted to his role coming off the bench. You know, he's the type of player that it takes a while for him to get going. Some guys can come right in and contribute immediately. Wes is somewhat of a slow starter. He simply hasn't been as effective as they would like for him to be uh, coming off the bench. Maybe they got the push early on, but I didn't see much of a foul there down low as Wesson... Misses on the one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and Kent Hill takes the board for Iowa. Believe me, you won't take it away from Hill when he gets his hands on it. <laughs> Iowa's 14 fouls in the first half. Marble's the only man in for the Hawkeyes that doesn't have a foul who's played here tonight. Marble from the corner. Had it partially blocked on the play by Hobson. Ohio State's Tony White comes away to Hobson. Here's Burson back to Hobson. Oh! Oh, that's a big one. That's big right there. Score the field goal and a blocking foul coming up against the Hawkeyes. That have been number three. Jeff Moe picks up his second. Take a look at it. Well, a little difficult to see. I don't know that the camera got over there quick enough for me to tell. There was certainly a bang-bang play. I mistakenly said it. Jeff Bow was B.J. Armstrong on the foul. Tom Davis not at all happy with that call. He felt that Armstrong had established himself defensively on the run. Hobson connects on the three-point play. He now has nine in his first half of play. 65 seconds to go. Ohio State makes a quick substitution. Joe Dumas coming in, number 33. Tom Davis conferring with the officials at the scores table, and Gary Williams, very upset. Well, first of all, Davis is, uh, is upset because they had the ball out of bounds already and had possession, and then the, the buzzer blew to allow the player in. And then they weren't quite set up to handle the defensive pressure, so Davis made a beef about it, went to the scores table, and then they stopped play. <laughs> so then Williams was mad. <laughs> Who won on that exchange, Steve? Update me, please. Well, it was, you know, it's no harm, no, no foul, so let play continue. Marble in the corner, less than a minute to go. Nine to second differential on the shot clock and game clock. Marble across great. the lane. What a great move. See, that's that jump step that I think uh, sometimes erroneously gets called traveling. Person on the drive, head of the field, and it won't go. Hill there for the rebound. Here's Armstrong. Lost the dribble and a foul call. Wilson guilty of a hack. His second personal that is seven on the team. I'll tell you what, dude, watch Garrett Williams. This guy, he must lose 10 pounds of ball game. He's up off the bench yelling and screaming. He must really into the ball game. He walks at least a mile back and forth in front of his bench, at least a mile and a half. Armstrong now at the free throw line for Iowa. Sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, out of Brother Rice High School. 11.6 assists against Northwestern. Six points against Illinois Saturday. Armstrong. One and one opportunity for Armstrong at the line. He has eight points. Boy, one thing I. Of course, you want Hobson in there to maybe get the last basket for you, but 19 seconds to play. Three personals on uh, Hobson. Make that two, two personals on That's what on I mean. You know, you, you, maybe he gets the last basket, but maybe he gets thrown a bad pass and picks up a charge like he almost did just there. 
I'd be more inclined to give him a rest and at worst hold for the last shot and go you now. <laughs> Kent Hill gets it back for Iowa and the Hawkeyes will try to dictate who takes the last shot. No shot clock now. Ten seconds left to go in the half. Five seconds to go now. Armstrong looking for room. Good feed. Hill on the turn off the glass. It won't go. Hill gets it back and no good. That might have been, they're going to say goaltending. Are they going to score the field goal? Well, the question is, you know, was the shot in the cylinder, was it? Well, the first question is, did they allow the shot? Did, was the shot taken before the buzzer went off? If so, then was it in fact goaltending? The official initially said it, it was no good. And I believe had it fallen, it would have counted. At any rate, a well played up and down first half and Iowa has a one point lead. We'll be back with as we start the second half. Ohio State will have the ball. Iowa had 12 offensive rebounds. Steve scored eight points off those 12 offensive rebounds. Ohio State, seven offensive rebounds, got two points in that first half off the offensive board. That's not bad. You give up 12 offensive rebounds and they only score eight points. Uh, you were pretty lucky. Same way on the other end, though. Boy, one uh, conversion after seven offensive rebounds for the Buckeyes. Ohio State had some trouble at times with the Iowa full court pressure in that first half of play. We'll see how they handle the press in this second half. Well, let's see if they make a little more concerted effort to get the ball inside to Hobson. That was one of their objectives coming in tonight. From the outside, Anderson <laughs> Brown drains it. He won't shoot it out there often, and it's funny. When the shot went up, you could hear the crowd go, oh, yeah, and then the, then the applause. It was a strange groan, wasn't it? Gamble shaking loose, baseline of the finger roll. Gamble's first field goal, he has just three points. Well, you know, he had 20 in that big win against Arizona, but he hurt his thigh and has only had four points in each of their last two ball games. Dennis Hobson is hurt from early here in the second half. Ohio State leading by one. Iowa sets it up offensively. Lowhouse looking down low for Gary Wright. He's a great athlete. Here's Lowhouse on the outside. He has not been on tonight. Not been able to get off the mark. Opposite of the rebound. This is Curtis Wilson. Lowhouse has the rebound. It has not. His poor shooting has not affected his board play here tonight. No, he's played the other areas of the game very well. Gamble had it tipped away, knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Iowa. There's Gary Williams on the Ohio State bench. Of course, Lowhouse only got 13 minutes of action in the first half. He had those two quick fouls. Gamble for three. It rings out. Francis the rebound. Ohio State leading by a point can make it three. And the pass thrown away down court. Get it to the middle. Get it to the middle. B.J. Armstrong looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. Shoots it over Burson. Anderson trying to corral the rebound. And a good hustle move. He saves to Curtis Wilson. Hobson off the feed from Wilson. The block by Gary Wright. Sensational defensive play by Wright. Now they've got him outnumbered now. Armstrong off the glass won't go. There's Lowhouse. Well, I, I thought Armstrong just made uh, two questionable plays. He had three on two before he failed to get the ball to the middle. That time he, they had, had him outnumbered on the left-hand side, and he took a jump shot. Hobson comes up short, but is fouled on the play by Gary Wright. That is number four on Wright, and what makes this so important is that Wright has been a dominant player when he's in there, especially on the defensive end. He's forced on many occasions, Hobson, for example, to change the trajectory of his shot on the drive through the lane. The only thing I can imagine, Wayne, is when you come in off the bench and you're in a substitute role where you're playing maybe 12 minutes a game, you can be very, very aggressive. He's in a starting role now. Right. He's got more minutes. Good point. Not that you have to pace yourself, you just can't be as reckless as you as you can coming off the bench. And Dennis Hobson to the free throw line, leading scorer in the Big Ten, makes good on his first. He has three of the five Ohio State second half points. Hobson averaging 29.2 points per ball game, 36 and seven rebounds against Iowa last month. Hobson connects on a pair, and now right away, prior to the inbounds, we've got a foul on Jerry Francis. Francis bumping with Ed Horton. 
Well, I thought this was going to be one of those situations where they caught the second guy. I thought Francis was holding Horton, and Horton in an attempt to get away just raised his arm, and it looked like he was elbowing Francis in the jaw, and I, you know, I don't think, I thought that was a very good call by the official. Francis picks up his third. Here's the steal by Hobson on the drive for two. He has six second half points. We're not even two and a half minutes into the second half. This is Lorenzen, and Iowa sets up offensively. Hawkeyes trail by three. This is Horton down low. The rebound back tap. Person trying to control, but Armstrong retrieves. Well, Person attempted to make the good play. Didn't think he could come up with possession. Tried to tip it to himself. Armstrong just happened to get the ball. Person prize it loose again. Armstrong gets it back. No, Person comes away, and they've got the numbers in their favor, and Person all the way for two. Iowa trying to come right back. Ohio State leading by five. Marble is pushed on the good play call. by Hobson. It's a good call. That is the third on Dennis Hobson, second on the team. there, Steve Rooney. Well, Iowa looks just a little bit out of sync. You know, when they run the ball down the floor, the first option is get it into the left corner. They run the corner fast break. The last three times Armstrong's come down, he's hesitated. The ball hadn't gone there. Uh, so they, they just don't look like they're making all the right decisions right now. Billy Jones in the game in place of B.J. Armstrong. Jones will play the point for the Hawkeyes. Ohio State's outscored Iowa 10-4 to, to start the second half. A little over three minutes in, second half of play. This is Jones directing traffic. Not much well, movement you, in that Iowa offense right you know, now. You see a lot of combinations when when Iowa plays, but if you've ever seen this one, Hill, Marble, and Lorenzen across the front line. So they've got Lohas on the bench now, and Gary Wright with foul trouble. He's on the bench. Iowa picked up a lot of fouls early in the first half. So far, only one foul in the second half for the Hawkeyes. Jones sets it up. Iowa's showing good patience. They seem more comfortable in the setup offense now than they did earlier this year. Well, Tom Davis' staff will tell you that the reason they won the Illinois game is they feel like they played the better half-court offense, and that has become very much a sticking point with them. They want to perfect that area of their game. Anderson tie each other up, and on the alternating possession, they'll belong to Iowa. Almost four minutes in, second half of play. The lead is five for Ohio State. Moe from the corner. <laughs> Jeff Moe with the heat. Uh, he wanted that. Three pointer. He called for that one. Jerry Francis stopped for a moment. Anderson gets it away to Curtis Wilson, and Ohio State will set it up. In the corner, that's Hobson. Now they've got Mo guarding Hobson. This is a little bit in Ohio State's favor. Wilson on the drive. Score the field goal. Yes, it counts. And a charge. Yep. Third personal foul on Curtis Wilson. That is the third on the team. Watch it again. Yeah, I noticed another thing I noticed in practice. These Ohio State guards tend to jump in the air a little bit too often. Good defensive play, taking position. And position taken by Al Lorenzen. A good play defensively. 15.44 left to go in the game. Ohio State on the lead. We'll be back with more Big Ten action on the Big Ten Television Network. Has to been selected by Rasmussen Communications Management and approved by the Big Ten Conference. Steve, the game a, a little slower. It was more helter skelter, more fast break in the first half with both sides. Yeah, both teams seemed a little more confident offensively in the first half. Uh, Iowa now with some of the regulars back in the ball game. I, th I thought they were very much in danger of really uh, losing the continuity of their continuity of their offense with the lineup they had in there. Hawkeyes inbound. This is B.J. Armstrong. Armstrong, Lowhouse, and Kevin Gamble back in. Marbles in there, of course. And Hill is playing a lot in the middle because they've got foul trouble in the pivot position due to the Hawkeyes. A great move on Gary Williams' part, too. He's now moved Hobson with three fouls out to the point 
on the defense. Get him away from the board work. You know, you can pick up fouls by accident in there. Marble gliding and comes up short. Anderson picks up the foul. So on Anderson, it is his first personal foul. Now that is four team fouls at Ohio State, Iowa. Just one team foul here in the second half. Hawkeyes hold a heavy edge on the board, Steve. Listen to this, 32 to 17. Thus far in the game. Roy Marble has been a force here tonight. At least he was in the first half. Has not scored in the first five minutes or so of the second half. I really believe that Marble's one of those type players over the summer who doesn't really need to play a lot. I really believe that he has to go to the gym, take a basketball, and do nothing but shoot for a couple hours a day. You know, he's a great athlete. He's a great player. He won't miss the competition. He needs to work on those individual uh, moves and to, to develop a com some confidence with that perimeter jump shot. And uh, he's got plenty of time to do it. Now, you were just the opposite. You couldn't say no to a street gang game, could you? Hey. Sandlot game. If I'd have gone home in the summers and worked hard, I, I'd probably still be doing it instead of talking about it. <laughs> Aloha, on the rebound. Here comes Armstrong. Not to mention, you'd be a little wealthier. Armstrong on the drive. Nicely uh, done. You don't know how much you're paying me to do this. <laughs> think I'm in the poorhouse? <laughs> Well, maybe I should have told you that. <laughs> I'll expect the limousine service when we go to Ann Arbor. <laughs> right. 14 and a half left to go in the game. Ohio State leading by one. Buckeyes on the attack. Person looks like he's in the fifth grade, but he's a player. This is Hobson, and that guy, there's no question, he's a great player. Dennis Hobson of the second half now has eight points, and Burson picks up a foul to the backcourt. His second versatile, five on the team. Now, we talked about how difficult it is to officiate the Big Ten because of all the physical play. And you can't blow every whistle when there's contact. You have to let the fouls go if, if it's of no consequence. But these guards have been running at Armstrong the entire ball game. Getting the ball down the floor in a hurry is part of their game plan. They have got to call the foul when they bump Armstrong like that and prevent him from advancing the ball. That's a good call. Armstrong works the perimeter to gamble. There's Lowhouse. Down low through the hands of Marble and last touch by Ohio State. Ted Valentine with a tough call. Well, again, from our position, we're certainly, we had no angle to determine it, but he was right on top, right on top of the play. Inbounds to Hill. I thought it might have gone off Hill's hands is the way it looked. If it hit anyone's hands after the intended receiver, Marble couldn't handle it. Marble that time just you know, looked at the basket too soon, much like a wide receiver in, in football does. Low house down low for two. <laughs> yeah, might be a good no call, but certainly low house gained the advantage after the slight bump. I don't know that Anderson could have held his position, though. 13.25 left to go in the game. Ohio State's lead has shrunk to one. Wilson out front. Iowa's on an 8-4 to four run right now. Ohio State trying to put an end to it. Feed inside. Anderson down low. Blocked by Lowhouse. Are they going to call goaltending? They're going to score the bucket. Well, I'd have to see that again because I didn't think that shot was ever going to get above the rim. Take, well, again, the angle's pretty difficult. It did but get that, above the rim. Looked like a pretty good well, call. Yeah, but he tipped that ball as it was, as on, it was way on its way saying. to the basket. Okay. Yeah. It's an unusual uh, shot block. You usually don't see it happen from the angle that Lowhouse got it. Marble gets it back. Hits the bottom of the backboard. It'll belong to the Buckeyes. Ohio State gets it back. Tom Davis gesturing to his defense. Come up on the ball, play top. Well, they've got a good trap. They work it to perfection. Gamble for two off the steal. You can't give it to Burson in that position. He's only 5'11". You can't give it to him in a dead corner. He's not tall enough to see over the defense. Iowa with that swarming defense, and finally Ohio State breaks it across. Wilson on the penetration, rejected by Kent Hill. Here come the Hawkeyes flying out of the backcourt. This is Marble. Oh, here they come. Iowa on top now by a point. This is where the point guard is so important. Wilson's got to take the ball, slow it down, 
So the rest of his teammates, he's in control, run some offense. The ebbs and flows, Steve, of this game, if we were in a boat out fishing, we'd all be seasick by now. Well, I, the Iowa style of play kind of dictates that. Gamble with the body, if not on the hack. Second personal on Gamble, only the second foul on Iowa. And we're a little over eight minutes into the second half of play. Only the second team foul of the Hawkeyes in the second half. What Burson does so well is that he very seldom goes straight up for a jump shot. He puts the ball on the floor. When he shoots, he's always jumping towards the basket. So you think you're going to block the shot, but you're always getting him with the body. Jay Burson. Completes his first. He has three second half points, nine in the game. Person out of New Concord, Ohio, attended John Glenn High School. He finds a way to score. He's got that youthful appearance. He's a small kid, comparatively speaking, to the people he plays against on the floor, and he does an excellent job for Ohio State in the off guard position. No question about it. 11.59 left to be played. That's the story. Big Ten basketball continues after these messages. 10 scoreboard and the Iowa Hawkeyes have taken the lead by a point over Ohio State. We've got 11.59 left to be played. Second half, the rebounding edge heavily in favor of Iowa, 36-18. Watch this by Marble. Woo. Well, they ran the two-on-one fast break to perfection. What you want to try to do is keep passing the ball back and forth. Whoever gets the ball and has an angle to the basket takes it in and forces the, uh, the shot. There's the other game going out of the Big Ten. Michigan prevailing at the moment over Wisconsin. 4.06 left to go second half. And as we mentioned, tough for those Wisconsin kids after that Monday night battle marathon uh, with Indiana to get up off the mat, come back and play two nights later. Especially on the road, right? And with Michigan desperately needing a win to snap a three-game losing streak. Yeah, there was uh, nothing right for Wisconsin going in there to play tonight. working the perimeter 11 and a half left to be played Ohio State by a point Jeff Moe now out of the point got Hobson working out front as you mentioned before and they got three guards in the lineup now another line another combination you don't see too much of Armstrong Mo, and uh, uh, Jones forced by Armstrong White on the rebound to Hobson and it goes second half point for Hobson Lomax on the steal. Hobson now with 19 points in the game. Ohio State sets it up. They lead by three. Well, what we saw, what we failed to see in the first half, which was half-court execution of uh, offenses, I think I think is going to be the determining factor down the down the stretch here because it looks like now that the offenses are going to be much more hesitant to put the ball up quickly uh, against those set defensive schemes. Three-point goal by Wilson puts Ohio State on top by six. I believe that's their largest lead. They're on a seven-nothing run against the Hawkeyes right now. We're nearing the halfway mark, second half. <laughs> Iowa looking a little tentative at the moment against this Ohio State zone. The Ohio State crowd, you hear them in the back. They're just calling everybody's name out every time a pass is thrown. Under 10 minutes left to go in the game. Jeff Moe penetrates and forces. He draws the foul. That's a good play. Dennis Hobson picks it up. And that's a bad play for the Buckeyes. Hobson now with four personal fouls. Now, Ohio State fans will say that you know, Mo forced the contact, but he made a good play because he had the half step on Hobson. And once you get that half step, any contact's going to be whistled against a defensive player. Mo did a good job of uh, forcing the contact, using, using his body to shield the defense. Dennis Hobson leads with 10 second half points, 19 in the game. He has a seat on the Buckeye bench, and there's a look at Dennis Hobson. Jerry Francis reports on replacing Hobson in the lineup for Ohio State. Big difference right there, especially in offensive firepower. Moe connecting at his first. Jeff Moe now with 11 points in the contest. 
Well, you have to believe now with this lineup that hops it out, they will be very, very judicious with shot selection. And you have to believe they'll run a little bit more time each possession, work the ball around very briskly around the defense, and, and look inside a little bit more. Four-point ball game now. In favor of Ohio State, 9.45 left to go. Buckeyes break it across. Let's see how let's see how much time's left on a shot clock now, Wayne, before they take a shot on this possession. The burden on Curtis Wilson's shoulder increases when Hobson leaves the lineup. Wilson number 10 out of the point. He's the key right now. Francis inside with the scoop. Hill has the rebound. Iowa has dominated the boards tonight. Well, they shot it pretty quickly, but again, they looked inside and got the good attempt. Can't argue with the shot selection. It was there. Hawkeyes work the perimeter. Hawkeyes were in foul trouble in the first half. It's the reverse in the second half. Ohio State struggling on the way to foul difficulty. And the tempo's really slowed down. It hasn't? really has. Low house inside and heavy traffic. Throws it at the rim. Marble gets it on the weak side. Misses the shot, but he's foul. Packing foul coming up down low. Tony White says he's the guilty party. And White picks up personal foul number one. Now that is 17 fouls. Ohio State over the limit with 8.57 left to go. Gary Williams running out of options. Well, I'm sure Lowhouse put this up simply because he thought he was going to draw the foul. And maybe he got bumped a little bit and was off balance. But again, one of the things you must do, and certainly it hasn't hurt them so severely yet, is keep Iowa off the offensive boards. Marble is a 69.5% free throw shooter overall this season. His second upcoming. And we've got a three-point ball game in favor of Ohio State. We get it right away into Curtis Wilson's hands, and Iowa relaxes that pressure right away. Settles back. They're making Ohio State play the setup half-court offense. Buckeyes on the attack, leading by three. They get it to Francis inside. His shot off the mark. Kent Hill clears the board. Here comes Armstrong. The rebound, Marble. Marble puts it high off the glass for two. Yeah, that's a good no call, but if there was a whistle, I think it would have been on Wilson. Iowa has crept back to within one. 8.20 left to go in the game. Dennis Hobson on the Ohio State bench with four personal fouls. Well, you're really close to the decision-making time where you say, hey, we can't win this with Hobson on the bench, so we've got to get him back in there. Anderson has six points in the second half. Foul is on Lomax in the backcourt. Good call. His first personal. Team over the limit, as I mentioned before. 8.03 left to be played. Second half. Ohio State leading it by three over Iowa. And the Hawkeyes will be at the line. Well, that basket right there probably just bought Gary Williams another two uh, minutes a minute minute and a half All I was right. going to say 90 <laughs> seconds it depends you're right because that gives you the three-point lead it does gives you another minute let Hobson sit on the bench Armstrong at the line you get his average in the Big Ten he's almost there and in fact he's there now with 10 points 8.03 left to be played. Tom Davis on the Iowa bench, sitting next to Brad Lowhouse. Bruce Pearl, the assistant. Bruce has been with Tom since his days at Boston College. Nine, nine years now, I believe. Two out of three from the line for Armstrong. B.J. connects out of fair. Iowa back to within one. Eight minutes left to go. Ohio State with the lead in the ball. Curtis Wilson handling the ball a lot more now, Steve. You can see it with Hobson on the bench, and that's a good move, obviously. He becomes their most experienced ball handler on the floor. Well, Iowa's done a great job when this guy gets the ball inside and not fouling him because he tends to put up a lot of wild shots, and that's what he's done the last two offensive possessions. Hill on the follow, it won't go. Hawkeyes seem to have it surrounded. The ball pounds loose, and it's up for grabs. Knocked out of bounds. Touched by Tony White, I believe, is who's it going to belong to. They're going to send it to Ohio State. I believe so. That'll get Hobson back in the game, you have to believe. 
Ohio State gets it back as again the ball ricochets like it's a pinball machine and Ohio State clings to a one-point lead with 7.35 left to be played here in Columbus. You're watching Big Ten Basketball on the Big Ten Television Network. Get a look at some of the action right here. Watch this scramble. First off, B.J. Armstrong almost lost the ball. And now right here. So back that's a big, forth. strong, that's a big, strong rebound. Iowa is not cashed in as well as we thought they might. I they, thought for a moment, but again, it was last touch. Tony White did not touch it last. Last touch by the Hawkeyes. You can see on that replay, that was a good angle to see that action. From our angle, it looked like Tony White was the man who touched it last. Well, it's exactly what Gary Williams needed, a stoppage in play so he could get Hobson back into the ball game. I was outscored Ohio State 7 to 2 since Ohio State's biggest lead of 70 to 64. The inbound tip by Lowhouse. Gamble comes away. And the Hawkeyes reload the offense. A chance to take the lead. Again, you see the advantage of having a big seven footer with the uh, mobility and agility to guard the inbounds passer. That has to be the uh, at least the second time he's tipped a pass for a steal in this ball game. B.J. Armstrong, there's Gamble out front. Under eight minutes left to go. Coming up on seven minutes left to be played. Marble on a oh, they didn't call that didn't foul. Call foul. Lowhouse for the slam on the weak side. <laughs> now that's a foul that I, I would think should have been whistled down. Iowa by a point. Hobson back in the game. Pulls up and puts Ohio State back on top. 21 points of the game for Hobson, 12 in the second half. 6.40 left to go. Well, Iowa's biggest fear in full court pressure was just realized there. They just don't feel like they can stop Hobson in a broken court situation because he has so many offensive moves, speed, quickness, and ball handling ability. Iowa working the basketball. It's a hush over this crowd, isn't there? Seems like everybody's too it's nervous really to cheer. Tense. It's really, it's got really tense, tense in here, yeah. yeah. Just too nerve-wracking to cheer at this point for the crowd. Low house down low, swings away off the side of the backboard. Person gets it back, and he's fouled on the play. Kent Hill reaching in. Good call. Second personal foul on Hill. That is the third on the team. It was obvious. I'm saying both of these teams go after the ball. When someone comes away on a break, on a fast break, you see the arms start flying and everyone's reaching for the ball. A lot of quick defensive hands on the floor. I'll tell you that in itself, this is a tough game for the officials to call. There's no question about that. Uh, this type of full court pressure, this 94 foot game on both ends. Wilson on the drive, loses his footing, gets it off to Burson. Uh, Lucky there, and Marble made a good defensive play. Didn't reach. When he saw Wilson start to lean in, he backed off, and Wilson lost his balance. Hops it out front. Now watch. If they get it inside to Francis, they will not foul him. They're, they're going to make him make the basket. Intended for Anderson down low, and Iowa off the turnover. Chance to take the lead. Again. Execution in the half-court offense down the stretch here is going to be the key to winning this ball game. Turnover in that situation. Iowa 18 turnovers. Ohio State has 15. Well, we expected a lot of turnovers coming in, Steve. Low house inside looking for room. Really didn't have any. The back tapped rebound. Hill chases it down and saved Armstrong. Good hustle by Kent Hill. He's played well here tonight. He really is. Excuse me. Some people would think that's a bad shot attempt, but in the Iowa scheme of things, if you get trapped, put it up at the basket. That's what they want to do because they have the confidence that their other players will go get the offensive rebound. They have the height in a low house. They have the leaping ability in a marble to go after it. You're right. Marble inside. Beautiful move. Did Wait they a minute. score it down low? I don't believe they did. I believe he stepped on the baseline. It looks like that's going to be the call. He ran out of real estate down low. We did not have a good angle on that shot from where we're sitting. He must have stepped out of bounds when he went around the first defender. Ohio State gets it back. Well, I thought that ball was going to hit the rim. 4.54 left to go. One point lead for Ohio State. This is Burson. There's Curtis Wilson out front. He sets up the play. They've got to be calling Hobson's number real soon, I would figure. 
There's Hobson in the corner. Even against the zone, you have to watch for uh, dribble penetration. Air ball authored by Wilson from three-point range out front. Iowa gets another shot at the lead with four and a half to go. Now Gary Williams was off the bench asking for a tip ball, but that was just, uh, that was all air. Here comes B.J. Armstrong setting it up for Iowa. Time left in the game, bottom lower right portion of your screen. Jeff Moe and B.J. Armstrong playing catch. There's Marble. Cross-court pass. Moe's got the three-pointer in the corner. They've got to swing it around the horn is what they have to do. There's Moe out front. Armstrong for three, and he's got it. Three-point play. Well, I'll tell you, you know, he makes a lot of big baskets for this ball club. Wilson coming right back for two. We're tied at 76 with 3.50 to go. It's going to be one possession after another. We're in a half-court game right now. Well, and I was going to come in with all their starters now. The next dead ball. Marble looking to deal baseline. Ohio State playing that zone. Mo wants one. Down low. Marble comes up short. Rebound taken down low by Jerry Francis. And the ball tipped out of bounds by Kent Hill. That's a good defensive play because you've got Hobson coming down in a transition situation, and he's going to take it right to the basket. Timeout on the floor. Michigan prevails over Wisconsin tonight. We have 321 left to go here in Columbus, and we are tied. Let's see if we can spy Roy Marble stepping on the baseline here. Here's his drive at the baseline. Did he oh, dribble on the line? Maybe the ball hit out of the bounds. The ball hit out of bounds, apparently. He did not step on the baseline. The official gave Ohio, disallowed the basket, gave Ohio State the basketball on the side. And you see Ted Valentine looked to me like it was a good call. Rebounds Iowa 44, Ohio State 23, and Ohio State still in the game. You wonder, you know, against uh, with Iowa, you see that night in, night out. They lead the nation in rebounding margin. It's up around 13 a game. I mean, they've got a solid three rebound per game uh, lead on the second team yeah, in the country. I know it. There's the uh, team foul situation. Ohio State has been over the limit now for quite some time here in the second half. Again, getting the ball in bounds has been somewhat of a – a difficult thing for Ohio State. They, not a lot of pressure that time in the back there. Second chance points, Iowa 17, Ohio State 2. I don't remember Ohio State getting an offensive rebound this half. I really don't. Ohio State sets up rather cautiously on offense. Three minutes now, straight up to go. We're tied at 76. Well, this has really gone into a half-court game. It was helter-skelter in the first half for the most part. Ball was flying around this gymnasium. Ten to nine seconds on the shot clock. They've got to get a shot in a hurry. I don't know if Hobson realizes it. Wilson to first, and they've got time. Good ball movement. Hobson gets it back for two. 14 second half points, 23 in the game for Dennis Hobson. Ohio State now by two. Crowd trying to get itself into the game. Here it comes. One thing about the Iowa Hawkeyes, you cannot shake them up. They don't rattle, do they? They really Not don't. I wouldn't expect uh, the crowd, the situation, anything to have an effect on them uh, here tonight. B.J. Armstrong gamble on the penetration. Nicely done. And certainly that was their biggest possession of the evening. Gamble with six second half points, two minutes straight up to go. We've got a tie ball game. Gamble. This is Curtis Wilson. He walked. I thought person walked right there. <laughs> Picked that pivot foot up. What did you say? No harm, no foul? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ohio State's doing right now what they'll do every once in a while. Work the ball around the perimeter, run some time, but it doesn't look like they are. Wilson to person. Person on the drive, and it won't go. Hudson on a tap oh, comes up short. Two Ohio's. Two Ohio State guys collided, or they'd had the basket. Armstrong nails it for Iowa. B.J. Armstrong now with 18 points of the game. The Hawkeyes have scored four unanswered, and they have taken a two-point lead. With a Purdue on many of these Big Ten television network stations. 
Right here, this game has lived up to billing, hasn't it? Crunch time now, baby. You don't want to throw a gutter ball to this stage. No way. 80 to 78, Iowa leading Ohio State, a minute 16 to go. Obviously now, defensively, you have to know where Hobson and Wilson are on the perimeter. If Francis gets it, gets it inside, you don't want to foul him. Make him make a shot. I think he's more apt to put up a wild attempt, um, so you don't want to foul him and contest his opportunity. You saw the foul trouble on both sides, and obviously that will dictate defensive tenacity or intensity. Ohio State trying to tie with a conventional field goal here. Under a minute left to go now in the game. This is Hobson. Well, the defense looks like they're moving as well as they have the entire half for Iowa now. Quick hands, quick feet on the perimeter. They've had most options guarded in this possession. 13 on the shot clock. This is Anderson in traffic. Good great defense. pass. Little defensive breakdown in that situation. The guard has got to come down and front that weak side offensive player. Jerry Francis was open, and Anderson found him. And we've got a tie as a result with 32 seconds to go. Guys will be in possession when we resume. And a look at this last sequence for Ohio State to tie the game. There's okay. Anderson. Great defensive help. Anderson with a lot of poise. The defensive mistake, again, B.J. Armstrong just a little bit late. Yep. He has to slide down on that zone from the off guard position and cut that pass off. Armstrong was trying to do what you pointed out, but again, Jerry Francis had good position to take that pass, and they threaded it right around Gary Wright. Very often in these situations, the most difficult thing to do is to get the ball in bounds. Knocked out of bounds. Francis, out. Francis got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. Got a toe on it. I'll tell you, if they... Up in here at half court, if they get through a right to Marble, all he has to do is outrace. Oh, they tried to. They tried to. It was batted away by Anderson and Burson. If Marble gets that, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation with Anderson. It's a mismatch. Ohio State can hold for the last shot. The mistake, 24 seconds to go. That's where the pass should have went. Marble's mistake was he didn't come and meet the ball. Anderson and Burson collapsed on Marble. They triggered it loose, and Ohio State, as a result, with 24 seconds to go, has a chance to win the game in regulation. Turnovers now. Iowa 20, Ohio State 15. The second half of this game, it was up-tempo, 94 feet both ends. In the first half of the second half has been a game of half-court strategy. And now Ohio State, with the most important possession of the game, gets a chance to at least move on top, if not wait for the last shot and win the game. Well, this is such an important game. I mean, Ohio State has a very difficult schedule the remainder of the year. Everybody's talking six Big Ten teams in the NCAA tournament. I happen to believe that that uh, should be the case. But again, if Ohio State or Michigan completely fall apart down the stretch here, you know, it won't be difficult to keep them out of the tournament. So a victory here, I believe, would really sew it up for Ohio State. Ohio State hosts Minnesota on Saturday, then hit the road for games at Illinois and Purdue, come home for a contest against Florida International, finish up on the road against Indiana. So you're right, it's a tough road to hold for the Buckeyes. In their remaining Big Ten games, the Buckeyes felt coming down the stretch, team that they could get a, a victory over Minnesota at home, and that the one shot they would have in the other Big Ten game would be against Iowa here in Columbus. And obviously, that's the situation. That's what they're trying to do tonight, get a very important win against Iowa on their home floor. Iowa, on the other hand, they're still in the Big Ten race. They're looking to stay in it. Well, again, they've got to get the ball in bounds. That's, uh, that's been an accomplishment that hasn't, been, hasn't come easy tonight. Iowa loses here tonight. That important game against Indiana loses some of its luster. Ohio State takes the deep drop on the inbounds. This is Wilson. Got a Gamble foul. and Gamble bumps him. And they called it. I can't see how they would have missed that. He screamed in the official. He was standing right in front of him. The call on Gamble. Well, I think what they really third. Well, since they weren't in one and one, what they really wanted to do was take this foul 
you know, once they got the ball across half court. See, you could have made him bring the ball across half court another five seconds before you fouled it. The first set had it blocked by the foul. Foul on Ed Horton. His boy, fourth boy. personal, that is five team fouls now. He would have had to got him with, uh, found him with the body because it certainly looked like the block was clean. Little breakdown defensively, burst in with a, a, a burst of speed, and he got the advantage to the basket. Burson is the second best free throw shooter on the Ohio State team at 80.6% overall, and he'll be at the line. You know, the other thing, Wayne, that you have to do in that situation, you've got Lowhouse, I believe, was guarding the ball. You have to, he's so tall, he could prevent an inbounds pass from going into the forecourt. So you have to shade a little bit towards your basket and make any inbounds pass go to the backcourt. Uh, just uh, an uncharacteristic breakdown right there. 15 seconds left to go. Burson will be at the line if he hits both free throws. Iowa timeout, set up an offense, or do you get it down court as quick as you can? Um, well, I think you get the ball down the court as soon as you can. The, I think scoring off of a made free throw or basket is something that Iowa does very, very well. Uh, certainly, if both shots are made, they're going to try to intercept um, B.J. Armstrong as he runs the ball in full court. Um, but they won't call timeout. Off a of make or miss, they're going to get it down and try to score immediately. 15 seconds left to go, and they would have to score almost immediately to get it done. That would only tie the game should it be a conventional two-point field goal. They could go for the win with a three-pointer or play for the tie. Now, that's if Jay Person makes both free throws. That's a big assumption in this situation, although the kid is an 80% free throw shooter. Well, that's what Ohio State did down the stretch in their earlier meeting. They made all the free throws down, uh, down the stretch. Tom Davis taking a cool drink on the Iowa bench. Jay Burson, a two-shot foul at the line. He has four second-half points, 10 in the game. He can still give Ohio State the lead. Gary Williams, rather calm at the moment on the Ohio State bench. Jay Burson. And he missed them both. Gary Wright the rebound. Here comes B.J. Armstrong. Ten seconds to go. Lowhouse to Gamble. Gamble oh, free up open. for two. Four seconds to go. Timeout, Ohio State. Iowa has taken the lead. Kevin Gamble was left wide open, and he hit it. And Gary Williams now is over at the score t scores table arguing for another second. He wants five up on the board. Buckeyes called a timeout immediately. Watch it again. Watch this. They back off defensively. All of a sudden, no one's there. Well, you can't fault Wilson. He he thought he was going to be able to cut off the pass and maybe prevent the offense from, uh, from continuing. Uh, in retrospect, it's obviously a bad play. That pass would have gone to an offensive player who was not in shooting range. Uh, the breakdown comes, and Gamble gets a wide-open jumper. Gamble made a good move, started to his right, made it look like he was going to pass, and as you mentioned, the defender played the pass. Gamble pulled up and then went to it. Now for Iowa, you know, I have to believe that they'll set up their defense three-quarter court. They don't want to pick up full court, I don't believe, because that way you can inbounds the pass possibly to the half court area you want to play three-quarter court make them throw it in with a short entry pass force them to dribble the ball down the floor uh, under that those circumstances uh, the best they could do is get off a half court shot i believe four seconds remaining gary williams did not get an extra second on the clock both teams talked it over ohio state not much time to get the ball down court. And if you're Iowa, do you lay back a little bit more, maybe defensively? You don't press up front. You don't take the risk that they may be able to baseball it in and get the uh, layup. Uh, no question. Like I just said, three-quarter court defense, uh, I would think, would be the strategy for Ohio State. Uh, All you, you can know, do normally is... You'd like, normally, you would like Wilson or Hobson with the ball, uh, maybe Burson, somebody with some speed. If, if, if Hobbs is not going to have the ball, you want him in shooting position, so you want dribble penetration by Wilson 
Hobson. for Burson, and Hobson in position to shoot the ball. Hobson's out of the midcourt stripe. And that's what Iowa's doing, three-quarter court, three quarter court pressure. Joe Dumas on the inbounds. There's the baseball feed. It's nearly intercepted by Armstrong. Burson, no good at the gun. Burson had a shot, and I believe it might have been a three-point shot. But Ohio State falls two points short of the Iowa Hawkeyes here tonight in Columbus, and a very big win for the Hawks, who now move to 10-3 and in the conference and 23-3. and Overall, that is the end of the game. The final score, the Iowa Hawkeyes 82, the Ohio State Buckeyes 80. We'll be back with more comments in a moment.